Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another video. I'm really happy to see you all again. Now, if you don't know, my daily driver for a computer has been the Dell XPS 9520. And it's my computer that I've been doing my work on for about a little over a year now. So for those who are not familiar, this is the Dell XPS 9520. For the most part, I've been pretty happy with the computer and it serves its purpose. Now recently, I've been having some serious issues with battery degradation. It's gotten so bad that I knew that I was getting close to the end of life for this particular battery that was installed in the computer. Let me show you what I mean. Now, if we look at some reviews for this particular computer, and here is a great example of one, and this is by tomshardware.com, and they get to this section where it says battery life on the Dell XPS 15 95 20, which is the model I have. And it says the XPS 15 did quite well on our battery tests, especially both on an OLED screen and a discrete graphics card. It lasted nine hours and 43 minutes on our workload. Now I've never seen nine hours, but of course my configurations are different from the ones that are listed here. Now let's take a look at another example. And this one is on ultrabookreview.com. And we get to the section where it says battery life. They have different configurations and it'll tell you roughly around where your battery lasts. One example, which is the first one, which says around eight hours of use, you are editing text in Google Drive, you are having the screen at 60% and your Wi-Fi is on. Another example, which is the last one, it says around two hours of use and that's with gaming on Witcher 3 with 30 frames per second, utilizing optimized mode, having your screen on 60% and of course the Wi-Fi on. Now in my particular case, I saw anywhere around two to three hours of usage and that was normal for me. The way that I figured out that the battery is reaching end of life, not only did the computer warn me that my battery life has severely degraded, but also you can see it while you're working. Let's take a look at this video that I captured for you all. So as you can see, it is currently 1.14 PM and my battery is at around 71%. Now, of course, this is gonna be very fast in the timeline, but you can see that my battery is degrading very, very quickly over time. And we get roughly to about 1.50 PM where the battery goes from 71% down to 21%. So roughly in about 36 minutes of usage, and as you can clearly see, I'm not really doing anything. All I'm doing is capturing the video in order to show you what's going on on my desktop. But in 36 minutes, I lost 50% of my battery. Now, if you have a laptop and your laptop lasts less than an hour on battery life, and especially in my case where I'm on the road, you know, I'm either in the airport, maybe I'm in the plane up in the clouds and I'm not next to an outlet, less than an hour of battery life is completely unacceptable. And this is the point now where we replace the battery in the computer in order to make sure that we can continue doing the work that we need to do, like producing this content for everyone here to learn about engineering, tech, and finances. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. So in this video, I'm gonna walk you guys on how do you go about replacing the battery on this particular Dell XPS 9520. Now keep in mind, you may not have this computer, but the more important thing is you learn the process because this process doesn't change from manufacturer to manufacturer. You can take what you learn and apply to your specific laptop. Also, don't forget to watch the entire video because throughout the video, I'm gonna show you where Dell, specifically the manufacturer of this laptop, has some critical misses in my opinion. So hopefully you take what you learned from this video and you apply it so you don't overlook some of those mistakes that I believe Dell missed out on. All right, so let's jump into the content. Welcome everyone to my desktop. The first thing that we always do whenever we're working on computers is we go and pull up the documentation for the specific laptop or desktop. So with our browser open, let's head over to dell.com. We wanna go under support and let's go under support home. Since I've worked in this website before, it obviously has saved my history. So therefore you see the XPS 159520, which is the laptop that we are working on. If you don't have that up, of course, you can always go where it says identify your product or search support. We have the XPS 159520. And once we are at the support page for our particular model, we are interested in the documentation. So let's click documentation. Then we scroll down to where we get to manuals and documents. And we are specifically interested in the service manual. Now you can do either PDF or you can view it directly in the browser. I'm just gonna go ahead and view it directly in the browser. And what we are interested in accomplishing in this video, of course, is replacing the battery. So let's go under where it says removing and installing components. And we're interested in battery. And of course, one of the things that you always wanna make sure that you read are the precautions. So we'll click on that real quick. And this is a whole list of things to watch out for when you are working with lithium ion batteries. 
So make sure you take a pause, you read them and understand them with all the precautions out of the way. Let's go ahead and jump into the section where we remove the battery. Dell does a fairly good job of explaining the whole entire process. As I explained earlier, we'll talk about some misses that they have in their documentation. And the first thing, of course, that we do is follow the procedure in before working inside of the computer. So let's jump into that. And of course, the first thing that we want to do is we want to save and close all open files and open applications. And then, of course, you want to shut down the computer. And it gives you the steps in order to do that. In our particular case here, the computer was already shut down because I didn't have any applications up and I held the power button until the computer turned off. Not exactly what it says in the manual. It's another way of getting the job done if you're not concerned about saving anything. And in my particular case, I wasn't. Once you're done shutting down the computer, of course, the next thing to do is disconnect the computer from any attached devices and also electrical outlets. And in our particular case here, we are just disconnecting an adapter that I had on the machine. Everything else was disconnected, of course. The manual says to disconnect all attached network devices and peripherals, right? So we've already done that. So we've actually completed step three and four. And then, of course, it says remove any media cards or optical discs for your computer, if applicable, for step five. That doesn't apply to us. We didn't have anything connected. Now, the next item on the list after we're done with step one is step two, remove the base cover. So let's jump into removing the base cover. So now that we're in removing the base cover, it says that we need to have step one completed prior to working on this. And we are all done with that so we can move on to the next part. And in the next part, it tells us that we want to remove all eight screws around the base. There are eight T5 Torx screws. There is a specific kit that I have in order to remove these screws. Another great item about that electronic kit that I recommended earlier the plastic scribes are included in that kit. So you don't need to buy anything extra while you're working on this particular machine. I'll leave a link in the description so that way you can purchase the same screw set that I did that helped me accomplish this. And it's always good to have these lying around in case you're working on electronics. After removing all eight screws, the next item on the list is to use a plastic scribe in order to remove the base cover. And you wanna use that plastic scribe in the specific manner in which it's shown in this particular diagram. And again, I'll leave a little picture up there so that way you can all follow it. And again, it's very important to follow exactly how the instructions have it. So you wanna go from step one, step two, step three, four, five, and six, of course. And in my particular case, I've actually already done a lot of the prying in advance. Even though the video shows that I'm doing it a little bit differently, I've actually already followed the steps exactly the way the manual has it. And once you remove those eight screws, you wanna make sure that you're careful in how you remove the base cover. When you're removing the base cover, you wanna make sure that you're following all the caution notes that are inside of the service manual. So that way, when you are removing the base cover, you are not damaging anything inside of the computer so specifically, one of the items that are called out is the display FPC. With the computer open, the next thing on the list, this is not even in Dell's documentation. So I think this is a huge miss for Dell, and I really believe that they should have put this in their documentation. It is to clean the internals of the computer. It's not often that we have the computer open in this manner. And after some time of using the computer, naturally you're going to have dust and dirt inside of the computer and it makes sense to go ahead and clean the computer in order to make sure that the computer is performing at its optimal performance during the video you're going to see me use an air duster and air vacuum it's a two-in-one and i am going to be using that in order to clean the vents in the computer you're going to see me focus a lot in the area where the fans are and also where you have the heat pipes and where you have the exhaust vents. The reason why we want to clean the computer and make sure that there's no dust and dirt is to prevent thermal throttling. So for those who don't know what thermal throttling is, thermal throttling is a built-in feature inside of each component. So when you think of what's inside of a computer, you have a CPU, you have a graphics processing unit. All of these components inside have been engineered in order to protect themselves from burning up due to increased temperatures. As an example, if we look at the processor, as your processor works hard in order to crunch as much data as possible, in order to do that, the CPU has to work faster than normal. In order for the CPU to work faster than normal, it has to increase its clock speed. 
with the higher clock speed, that draws more power. And in drawing more power, more heat is generated. With your CPU producing so much heat, this is where your fans, heat pipes, and exhaust vents come into play. The heat pipes capture the heat produced by the CPU and carries that heat to the exhaust vents where it's pushed out of the computer, making sure that temperatures stay cool so your computer can continue to work as hard as it's working. If your computer is full of dust and dirt, it will prevent removing that heat as quickly as possible away from the computer. Thus, the temperature of your components, and specifically we're speaking about the CPU in this case, the temperatures of the CPU will increase. There are built-in mechanisms within the CPU that monitors the temperature, and if it reaches a certain point where it gets too hot, that's when you have thermal throttling, which will decrease the performance of your CPU in order to make sure that it doesn't burn up. So making sure that your computer is clean and free of dust is an absolute must. And I believe that Dell made a big miss in not including this as part of the instructions when it comes to working with your computer. If you're interested in grabbing the same air duster and vacuum, the two-in-one that I use in this video, a link will be in the description where you can go ahead and check that out. Hey guys, quick pause. Hopefully you're enjoying the content. If you are enjoying the content and you find that it provides value, make sure you go ahead and subscribe to the channel and turn on your notifications so you don't miss out when we upload to the channel. Make sure to give me a like for the video as it helps the channel grow. Share the video with a family member or friend so that way they can learn all about engineering tech and finances. Also leave me a comment. Do you guys have any questions on what you learned so far? I would love to hear from you. So let's head back to the content. Now the next item on the list is to actually disconnect the battery from the motherboard. And in my particular case, I have this looks like piece of tape that is holding down in place the battery connector with the actual motherboard. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove that. After removing that piece of tape, we can then use the plastic scribe that we were using earlier in order to push down the connector to remove the battery connector from the motherboard. After removing the battery connector from the motherboard, the next item on the list is to turn over the computer and we press the power button for 15 seconds in order to drain the flea power. And this is to make sure that we don't have any additional power inside of the computer after removing the battery connector from the motherboard. The next item on the list now is to remove the actual battery itself from the computer. And in order to do that, we have to remove four M2 by four screws and four M2 by three screws. And in the manual, they show you the exact locations of where those screws are. So make sure you remove those and keep them in a safe place, just as you've been keeping the other screws in a safe place as well. Remember, we don't wanna lose them. And keep in mind, while you're removing this battery from the computer, there's tapes in specific sections that hold the battery in place with other components. So you wanna be careful that you're removing those pieces of tape and make note of where those pieces of tapes are because you want to put them back where they were before. With the battery removed from the computer, we are all done with the first two sections. We can now move on to installing the battery. So let's go ahead and click on that. And now we've reached the section in the service manual that tells us how to install the brand new battery. The prerequisite says, if you're replacing a component, remove the existing component before performing the installation procedure. We've already done that. Now it goes on a little bit about this task. So it shows us a couple of images uh, and it tells us where the battery should go and what we need to do to make sure that the battery is secure and in place. So let's just briefly look at some of these steps. It tells us that we need to align the screw holes of the battery with the screw holes on the palm rest and the keyboard assembly. Then it tells us to make sure that we adhere the tapes that we secured the speaker cable and you saw us removing that tape earlier. Then it goes on to tell us that for steps three and four that we need to replace the four screws. One is M2 by three, one is M2 by four, and they secure the battery to the palm rest and the keyboard assembly. And finally, it tells us to connect the battery cable to the system board. Now looking at these procedures, they all seem to be okay based on what we did in the past, but there's a big issue that I see with Dell's documentation here, and here is another miss from Dell. So what do I mean? Let's jump into it. Here we are unboxing our new battery for the Dell XPS 9520. And all seems well. I'm looking through the box just to make sure that I didn't miss any items, make sure that I have everything with me. Now, as you saw in the instructions that I just read previously, we should just be installing the batteries, making sure that we screw things down, making sure that we put the tapes back where they belong, and also as well, connecting the battery to the system board. Although there is one slight problem, but in my particular case, I actually received the battery without no system cable. This is the cable that connects the battery to 
the system board. Dell has a huge miss in their documentation because you're supposed to tell folks, hey, make sure that you keep the old battery in order to remove the old cable which connects the battery again to the system board. Make sure you keep that because you're going to need it in order to put it on the new battery so that way you can connect the new battery to the system board. And again, I think that was a very big miss on Dell's part. So let's go ahead and remove the cable from the old battery and we're going to install it on the new battery so that way we can connect the new battery to the system board. With the cable installed on the new battery, we can now take the new battery and install it in the new computer. And of course we do that by following the instructions that I read before. So we wanna make sure that we align the screw holes. Then afterwards we're going to install all eight screws. And remember there are different types of screws so make sure that we install the proper ones. Then after that, we're going to make sure that we have the tapes in place. And lastly, of course, once everything is done, we can then connect our battery to the system board. And once all those steps are completed, we can then move on to installing the base cover. Installing the base cover is just following the instructions, but in reverse like we did last time. So I'm gonna go ahead and speed up the process so you can look at what it's like to install the base cover. And remember, there are screws that are holding the base cover in, so you also wanna make sure that you install those screws and make sure they're the right screws as well. And after all that is done, we can then turn on our system and preferably in this particular case, I know that batteries come with a little bit of a charge, so I'm actually going to test out the system and turn it on on battery power just to make sure that our new battery works. Welcome back folks. And by now you should know all there is to know about replacing the battery on this Dell XPS 9520. Even though this is specific for Dell, the process in which you go about doing the replacement of the battery is very, very similar from manufacturer to manufacturer. So just take what you learn and apply it to your specific laptop. And this video showed you how you can identify those misses and obviously not make those mistakes. If you liked the video and it provided value, make sure you go ahead and give me a like for the video, subscribe to the channel and turn on your notifications. And don't forget to send the video to a family member or friend so they can learn all about engineering, tech, and finances. And leave me a comment in the comments below and let me know if you have any additional questions or let's say you might have experience in this area and maybe there was something that I missed that you also want to share with my audience, I'd love to hear from you. So let me know in the comments below. So I'll see everyone in the next video.